Welcome to the Cougar Cast here at the Cocoa Post Sports. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, and this is the place to get all the information on what's going on inside the athletic department at IU Kokomo. And joining me at the top of the show once again is Grant Patterson, he is the Sports Information Coordinator at IUK. Grant, it's Super Week, and we have a super show right in front of us today. Yeah, exactly. It's Super Bowl weekend, one of the weekends I look forward to all year as a sports fan. And we've got a pretty big week in IUK athletics, so I'm excited to talk about it. You know, we talk a lot about, about things that are going on currently in, with sports that are in season. But this week, a sport that is not in season recognized a really talented young lady as Keely Hoopen Gardner had her jersey retired. Yeah, so Tuesday night at the uh, men's and women's basketball doubleheader against our rival IU East, we retired her number. And I think it just speaks to not only the player, the impact that she had on the field, but off as well. She was here when the program started for, I think it was so five years ago. She spent five years here with the COVID year. So I think she finished with some absurd number, like 65 goals in 91 career games. And that's that's pretty impeccable. I mean, it's not often you score in half of your career games. And she did that. I mean... Yes, her junior and her final two or three years, she was scoring multiple goals a game. But I mean, ever since she stepped on the field here at IUK, she made an impact. And we, our coaches more specifically, thought it was only right that we retire her number so that she's honored for the rest of our program's history at IU Kokomo and nobody else on our IU Kokomo women's soccer team will ever wear the number 26 again. You know, there are many times that we were doing the athlete of the week for IUK in the fall and the soccer season, the volleyball season. And there were numerous times that a soccer player was named Athlete of the Week, and they had a hat trick in the game that they played, one of the games they played in that week. Hooping Gardner was one of those players that had a hat trick, and I don't know her the number of hat tricks she's had in her career. It's at least five, no exaggeration. I think I counted seven, but I don't have the entire career stats yeah. in front of me there. So even if it's five, six, seven, that's still a lot. But even in the game when – the soccer team had game of the week. I believe it was in the conference tournament. Hoop and Gardner, I do believe, scored the first of two goals in that game, which went into double overtime. So her presence has been felt not just in this season, not just in the game that we highlighted in a big way that night, but throughout her entire career. And this is a phenomenal honor. We normally hear about it in big stages, professional ranks, college ranks. Uh, this is where we are, college here, and a player getting her number retired. That's huge. That's great. And I couldn't think of another a better player to receive this honor right now than her. Yeah, and it speaks to uh, – I'm going to stick to the field. It, even when she's not scoring, she had such – I know I've said impact multiple times, but the defense has to key on her because they know she's our most explosive yeah. player, whether it be her speed to get up and down the field or, or, her, or her skills with the ball, her dribbling. I mean – it was pretty impeccable to watch her over the past three years that I've been a part of the athletic department. And like I said, it just opens up other avenues of success for our girls, for our forwards uh, like Kelsey Hoot and Kaya Bogers and others who are able to add to their goal count and make an impact on the game because of what the attention that she's drawing away from the ball. It, 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 it's not just what she does with the ball. It's what she does away from it. And she's almost always, when she doesn't score this year or in the couple, past couple of years, it's because she's been double teamed, triple teamed at times. So it, it's truly remarkable what she's done and meant to our program. Speaking of things that a young lady has done and what it means to the program, this is just not one young lady. It's a group of young ladies because this past Saturday, the IU Kokomo women's basketball team faced a good competitive game, a competitive team in Brescia, came out victorious in that game, Grant, 82 to 76. Yeah, they were uh, struggling. We were down double digits in the first quarter, maybe maybe the first half, second quarter, not really sure, but I know we were down double digits at one point and then bounced back. I think we took, we even took a lead into halftime. So I think that speaks just the first half. We're not even talking the whole game to be down as quick as we were. Yeah. We were down quick and we were down big quick. So that was a little bit of a test for Coach Lisa Fluger's squad. And I think they really answered, uh, made everybody proud the way they fought back and answered, come back, take a halftime lead, really took control of the game in the third and the early stages of the fourth quarter. And then uh, once again, a second test in the game, uh, Brescia wasn't going to go away easily. They fought back. Uh, 
got within three or four. I think when you said you got there, they were it was within a couple points, and we had to knock down some free throws, take care of the ball towards the end of the game, and that'll only uh, make us better for the future, whether it be for the rest of this year or going into even next year. It'll only make us better being able to win those games in crunch time like we did on Saturday against the Bearcats. You know, guys, I'd like to highlight some players for things they've done on the court or maybe track and field for things they've done on the track or maybe the weight throwing, things of that nature. Well, in this game, this is one of those games where there are five players in double figures. The scoring was spread out in a great way. Olivia Dowden um, led the way 18 points on 6 of 10 shooting from the field. But Mia Katie, I do believe I said that name correctly, yep. 6 points, 8 rebounds, and 17 minutes of play. Yeah, there are people like Dowden and Anna Kaiser that get a lot of attention for things that they do, but I don't believe IUK wins that game if Mia doesn't do the things she did in that game where the Cougars were victorious. Yeah, thinking back to that game, she's definitely one of the athletes that sticks out. For me, it was just making the most of her minutes. Uh, she was all over the floor when yeah. she was on the floor, and it was impressive. It doesn't – I mean, I think you said six and eight. really sticks out. that She had a big and one, I think, an mm -hmm. old-fashioned three-point play there in the second in the second half that – was a big momentum changer, uh, gave us some momentum right back, or maybe even added on to the momentum. But her crashing the board, her ability to crash the board, and then it's just an added bonus when she's able to convert at the rim. And when she's able to when she's able to score, really, when we're able to score a balance like we did this weekend, yeah. we're a lot different team than we are otherwise. And she was a big part of that in her 17 minutes off the bench on Saturday. You know, speaking of that same game, same day, excuse me, um, Saturday, there was a doubleheader. Women played first, they won. The men played second. They beat Brescia as well, 70 to 66. First half of this game, Grant, I thought this was going to be a breeze. I'm not exaggerating. I yep. thought for sure the formula that the team had put together was going to be enough for the team to be victorious. Had four players in double figures. Max Newman, talk about him every week, 18 and 11. He's doing this thing again. Joseph Anand Jr., this young man in the first half, seemed like every time they wanted to get down low, he was cutting. He was getting the ball, spin move here, finishing right hand, left hand. And I'm like, my gosh, they just couldn't stop him. Right. 19 points on 9 of 11 shooting. He was a big reason, just like with Mia Katie in the women's game, Joseph Anand Jr. was a big reason why IUK won the men game that day. Yeah, he had a lot to say about anything that went on in the paint in that game. So did Max Newman. But Joseph Anand, man, I like to say this when I think a player is really playing well. He's a bad man. I mean, he's only a freshman out of Pike High School and nearby Indianapolis product. So, I'm really impressed with the recruiting job that our coaching staff did to get him here because I think uh, I think the sky's the limit for him, man. I've been so impressed with him through however many games we played, 20 yeah, or so. Yeah. And to think he has three more years of eligibility to blossom in front of our eyes and really, I mean, we got Max for another year to see those two go. <laughs> Noah Harris will be back. And we've got him working in there, rotating in with Julian Hunter, a super athletic guy in Julian at the four. And then you can sub Joe in who can bang in there with – with really the best of the best, I believe, get him even stronger, and it's going to be – he's going to be something, someone to look out for in the next few years in the River States Conference and one that other coaches, opposing coaches, are really going to hate playing against. And now, earlier that week, Grant, let's backtrack a little bit. There was a game, I do believe, against Oakland City, yep. a one-point win for the Cougars, and you watch these guys play a lot more than I do. Max had played 40 minutes in this game. Chris Chin led all schools – led all IUK – with uh, 24 points, 11 rebounds, but he played 45 minutes. Just talk about the endurance and longevity and kind of mental wear on the mind it takes to play 40 minutes or maybe 45 in a college basketball game. Yeah, being being somebody who is not a college athlete, there's only so <laughs> so many right? so far that I can take it and how much I know, but playing 45 or 40 minutes out of a 50-minute game considering we went double overtime – to me, that just speaks to the the shape that they're in. And, and that goes back to not only their work in the offseason, but coaching staff, Coach Eric Eckelberger and his squad do a great job of making sure they're in shape. But I think another piece I want to take away from that is Chris, I think he, put, he played great last week in the double overtime win. Without him, we definitely don't win the game. I mean, he another guard stepped up. Jackson Hari took advantage mm -hmm. of some minutes there, but Chris hits the shot to get to force overtime. And then it was Hari who knocks down the free throws to win it. I think uh, the thing that sticks out to me about last week's two games against Oakland City and Brescia are how Chris scores 24 on Tuesday and leads us to a win. Yeah. And then he only scores two points Saturday, but still plays a, a numerous amount of valuable minutes yeah. to lead us to victory. So the thing about our guys is you see Max, it's easy to get those. It's not easy, but it's easier to be out of the stat line when you're in the paint. 
for Chris, man, I really think he still had a good game Saturday. It might not show points-wise, but I think he's one of our two leaders, him and Hunter Jackson and Del DeMyers. Those are our three guards that really lead the show for us this year. And even when they're not scoring, they find a way to get it done. He was scoring Tuesday, wasn't scoring Saturday, so maybe we've got something good in store for our games Tuesday night against IU East. Speaking of Saturday last week, the baseball team went down to Georgia Unfortunately, into the series, one and three, only one win, three losses, one and three on the season. But that one win they got was an eight seven win over a team that's really good at Truett McConnell. Yeah, and I think it speaks volumes to think that we didn't just hang our heads after dropping the first three games of the weekend and could have just packed our stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Packed our stuff in and just gone through the motions in game four of the series, but they didn't. We had a big lead. I think we were maybe even up 7-0. I know we had a big lead, though, in game four. I will say that. And they, they made a comeback. I know they scored six runs in the fifth inning to tie the game at seven, a scoreless sixth inning. And then we managed to push one across. Got a shout-out, uh, junior catcher Luke Hansen. He was big in that game four start. Went three for three at the plate with three singles. Game-winning uh, RBI, single to – Somewhere in the outfield, I'll tell you that. I think it was left field, maybe center field. And if it wasn't there, it was right field. But he's coming off a big uh, – he was out all year last year with an injury. So his first game back, competition, to go three for three and uh, call a good game behind the plate with uh, junior Logan Greer getting the start on the mound, I think that was really impressive. And uh, don't really know this week's plans. I'll be interested to yeah. see. Just got informed that uh, we were supposed to go to number six in the nation, Tennessee Westland, but we're not sure if that will happen anymore due to rain. So – could be a home series this weekend. We'll keep you updated. We'll make sure Jay and the Kokomo Post team get something out if we are having a home series. Now, do you know if that will be a game against Tennessee Wesleyan here? It will not be. We know the only way we will be playing Tennessee Wesleyan is if it is at Tennessee Wesleyan. Gotcha. We're, we are looking for backup opponents in case that we aren't able to play in Tennessee due to rain. Speaking of impressive things that have happened recently, let's go to track and field. Recently got the chance to talk to and sit down with Coach Josh Colvin and get to hear from him and the insights. He highlighted not only the players that were, have qualified already for the national indoor tournament or championship meet, but also those that have broken school records. And they recently went to Indiana Wesleyan recently, and Nolan Talley broke his own record in the high jump. Then the 4 by 400 meter relay team of Leslie Sprinkles, Hannah Wells, Paige Brooks, and J.D. Jones, they broke the school record by 14 seconds. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, and, and like he said, we're a young program, so records are going to be broken a little more often than other programs, more established programs. But to me, that just adds to a, a recruitment value to us. Like, hey, we haven't been around long. You've got an opportunity to really make your mark here at our program, and I think that's what our coaching staff has done, and that just speaks to it. Those a couple freshmen – I know three newcomers on that team. Can't remember the fourth one, but three newcomers on that 4x400 yeah. relay team. So that just speaks to the recruitment job we're doing. And, hey, one more tournament, I think one more event invite this weekend and then a week off in there at the River States Conference okay. Championship. So two more weekends to qualify for Indoor Nationals, really looking to take a bigger group. I'm sure that they can accomplish great things at Indoor Conference as well. So I'm excited to be following along there. But back to Coach Talley. Coach Talley's getting it done <laughs> yeah, he is. on the sidelines, coaching the squad, and then coaching that 4x400 four relay team to success, and then getting it done himself in the high jump. So super impressive, and congrats to Nolan Talley himself. Guys, I'm going to take this time period in the middle of the show to give, to give a shout-out and appreciation to the man sitting to my right, and I do believe Nolan Talley, who writes those write-ups for the track and field men's and women's meets, yep. but also to Grant as well. I don't get the chance, and I know many of you don't either, to get out to watch all the home games that IUK Athletics has, and many of us don't have the means to get out and go to all the away games that IUK Athletics has, but they do a phenomenal job of these write-ups and post meet recaps or post game recaps, and um, even being able to go back and look and see IUK scored the first seven goal, first seven um, runs in the game against Truett McConnell. That may have been Grant. That may have been somebody else. I don't know, but whoever is in there putting the stats in and the write-ups you do and the write-ups that Nolan Talley does, they do a phenomenal job of allowing people like us to keep up to date outside of this show with what's going on at IUK. Nolan, I know you're not here looking into the camera on purpose. Thank you very much. And then Grant, you're next to me. Thank you as well. Yeah, I got to give one more shout out. Nolan, uh, Nolan helps me out a lot, but then I got another one, Toby Turner. He yeah. helps me out a lot as well. So super thankful of all those guys. But to me, the purpose of those recaps is if – most people who read them aren't going to have been at the game, but I know our parents love reading them, coaches as well. And it, and like we like I've said on this show before, if you weren't at the game, it's 
the recaps are meant for you. Yeah. We're going to dive into the recaps, especially if it goes in our favor. We're going to dive a little deeper, a little play-by-play -play of how it happens, and we're going to highlight the big events, who accomplished what, especially in track and field, where we're not doing team scores. So, yeah, a little bit of everything in these recaps. We're just trying to make sure that everyone is included and that everybody in the public, the the viewing, the audience, whoever wants to see it can see it. And that's all available at IUKCougars.com. So we got to hear a little bit about the baseball and what might come later this week. Hopefully there's a game, maybe not in Tennessee, Wesley. And if it's here, hopefully they're able to play. But basketball, I know they got games on Tuesday. Grant, are they playing any other time this week? Yes, they're on the road Saturday at St. Mary the Woods College. And that'll be another revenge game for both teams. Both yeah. teams – uh, both teams dropped their piece of the doubleheader earlier this year at home to St. Mary of the Woods. So I'm pretty sure they're, the men's team is still leading the conference. Last time I checked, they were 7-1. and one. I'm not sure if they're up to 8-1 and one or if it's now 7-2, and two, but they're at the top of the conference leading our division. So that'd be a great road win for us. Two Saturdays ago from this coming Saturday, we picked up a road win at number 21 Point Park. So I don't think it's stretching it beyond the, tr beyond the imagination. Like I expect our team to go and compete and – eke out a road win. If not, it'll be a close loss. But I have full confidence in that squad. And then Coach Lisa Fluger and her squad and staff, I think they're more than capable of going on the road and competing with that SMWC squad that eked out a, a victory over us at our, on our home floor. So a little bit of a revenge there. I know our teams will come out firing, and maybe we can uh, complete a 2-0 and week if we get two dubs at home against IU East, a big rival. You know, guys, I do believe there's another chance after this week to watch the basketball team play in a doubleheader set. I think it's February 17th. Yep, you're correct. And I am i haven't confirmed with both coaches. I know for the men's team, it will be senior day. Women's team will have one more game after that on the following Tuesday. But I'm assuming we'll celebrate senior day for both teams on February 17th. So why not? Come on out. you got plenty of time. You'll have a week and a half yeah. by the time this airs to, to mark it on your calendar. So we'll see you Saturday, February 17th at the SAEC. You know, guys, that's one thing I was going to say, and I do it, encourage it all the time. Get out and watch these young athletes play. Young men, young women, doesn't matter. Go out there and watch them play. They deserve our support, and they do a phenomenal job of representing the university, but also representing the community as well. We all want to get behind people in the community and support them. The, a good way to do it is to get out to one of their games and watch them play. This week, there's a big game on Sunday. The man on my right already made a comment earlier, maybe a month ago now, about Taylor Swift. If you're a Swifty or if you're on the verge of being a Swifty, you might not like him. He may say what he said uh, previously. He might come up again. Uh, Grant, I'll give you a little bit of time here. I am predicting in the Super Bowl. Oh, boy. I said it earlier. I'm going to say it again. Not going to change my prediction that the 49ers beat the Chiefs 27 to 20. Man. I, I know it's a shock to a lot of people, including the man, the man on my right. But I do believe that Mr. Irrelevant will be relevant at the end of the day and lift that Lombardi trophy, the floor is yours. I have no problem with that prediction. In fact, I greatly enjoy it. <laughs> I, I side with him. I will be cheering for 40, the 49ers, Mr. Irrelevant, Kyle Shanahan, George Kittle. A lot of guys I really support on that team. Great, Just a great team all around. I love the guys they have on that team. That receiving, that receiver's corpse is insane. I mean, Brandon Ayuk, Devo Samuel, you got George Kittle as a tight end. Yeah. And I think he's a sleeper to be better than Travis Kelsey himself. But – with all the stuff that's going on around Taylor Swift and the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and Brittany Mahomes, do we really think the NFL is going to let the Chiefs lose? That's my problem. That's what I can't wrap my head around. And that's why, for my prediction, I'm going to side with the Chiefs. But you can bet a substantial amount of money that I will be pulling hard for the San Francisco 49ers. Not a single, not a single bit of me. Not a single bit of me will be cheering for the Chiefs. I'm sick of seeing them winning. I'm sick of seeing Patrick Mahomes on a pedestal. I'm sick of seeing Taylor Swift every Sunday. Let's go Niners. You know, I'm not really sick of Taylor Swift. I don't think I she's am. really done that much except for support her boyfriend. Just keep the camera on the game. That's she's just supporting thing. her boyfriend, and she's making millions of dollars. That is Has fair. the means of being in another country to come back after being – in numerous concerts back true. to back to back to support. That's all she's doing, Grant, supporting her boyfriend the entire time. Yeah, but are we tuning in? I think it's awesome that she's going to be in Japan the day before the Super Bowl yeah. and make it back. I think that just speaks to the love of respect and love she has for Travis. I guess I don't mind seeing her as much, but, like, what am I tuning into every Sunday? Am I tuning in to watch her concert? Or am I tuning in to watch the NFL? And for me, we're at the point in the season where I'm cool with seeing as many shots as her for a regular season game against the Raiders that we have to hype up because the Raiders aren't any good. 
But, I mean, this is a Super Bowl, man. Like, you got Usher performing at halftime. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'd much rather – all right, that, that takes away from it. Do we see Taylor Swift go out there with Usher at halftime? I mean, it's possible. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. But, I mean, my mom is going to absolutely shellac me for this because she's a big Taylor Swift fan and thinks I'm just a grumpy man for not wanting to see Taylor Swift. Kind of like the like, get-off-my-lawn guy. That's what you sound like right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like I'm – watching, I'm watching Super Bowl Sunday with my, with my buddies – I guess it'll keep the girlfriends involved. Maybe we'll get out a bingo sheet. Like I know our assistant AD, <laughs> our assistant AD Brent Martin said that at their Super Bowl watch party, they have a Taylor Swift bingo sheet to keep the ladies involved. So smart thing for your Super Bowl Sunday parties. But all I'm saying is Chiefs will get the victory, but I won't be pulling for them one bit. We're differing on who we're who we think is going to win the game. We're both rooting for the 49ers. And I know many of you are watching right now. You're either on Grant's side or you're not on Grant's I side. I doubt they're on my side. <laughs> I doubt so as well, guys. <laughs> I appreciate Grant Pedersen for coming on the show. Once again, he's a sports information coordinator at IUK. And I hope everyone has fun watching the big game on Sunday evening. I am excited for the game, especially the halftime show, because I think Usher is going to tear yeah. the house down when he gets out there on the field. But that's on Sunday. This is today. This has been the Cougar Cast. We'll see you next time.